Welcome back to Off The Grid with Bert. Part two, oil burner conversion to waste oil. Okay, as you can see, we've added the air solenoid and regulator, which has got a built-in water trap. Uh, quite important, you don't want water getting into your jet, It'll cause problems. Here's our um, oil connection, so that will go down into the preheating tank. Now I saw this on another video on YouTube, oh, I forgot the name of the um, YouTuber, but he converted a Beckett burner to run on waste oil. He was using a different setup. Um, I think it was a regular jet uh, or something he was using, but anyway, I thought we've got the oil pump from the original setup. Why not use it as our transfer pump? and then control flow with a solenoid. Um, the pump has got a bypass loop here, uh, so it pulls from here. Um, it will allow oil to flow into the tank until the float tells the solenoid to shut. Uh, and then the oil will simply just bypass around in a loop. Now I've tested this pump out before with this setup. It works perfectly fine. And it saves having a separate electrical supply running out to the oil pump. So rather than an oil pump, we just do it with a solenoid. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we will be sort of preheating this line coming across from the uh, sub tank anyway. So um, the oil should be thin enough. Um, although I've pumped some pretty viscous stuff with these pumps. They um, Viscosity is not really a concern to them. Um, at worst, it probably just kicks the amps up a little bit on the um, on the fan motor, but it's got plenty of power in reserve. It's a quarter horsepower. You know, all it's really doing is spinning a fan. Most of the power goes to driving the pump. So, yeah. Um, we've drilled and mounted the um, CAD cell mounting socket. Now the CAD cell, dig it out of this pile of rubbish here. Don't know how it got under there. Um, so there it is there. And basically it just clicks in. You want to do any service on it, just give it a quick yank. And it comes back out. Um, I've checked that it's got line of sight for the end of the nozzle. Um, fire tube, whatever you want to call it. Um, we still need to have a damper control for setting air fuel mixture. None of that changes um, between whether, whether it's running diesel or um, waste oil. You still need to be able to, sh to control your combustion air which comes in around the outside of the nozzle there um, air pressure is just there for atomizing so um, creates a venturi inside the nozzle block sucks the oil up from the tank um, it does that pretty quickly um, and yeah once the oil comes in contact with the uh, the cone of compressed air coming out of that uh, jet instantly atomizes the waste oil into tiny little droplets and burns nicely. Um, we've got a pressure gauge on the pump here so we can actually set the bypass pressure. Um, because we're not running a pressurized nozzle anymore, we can actually set our bypass at a fairly low pressure so you know, this will just tell us when it's bypassing and when it's when it's actually allowing oil to come through into the sub tank. Sub tank will be mounted down underneath here. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. Um, so we have the WT controller mounted to the side of the burner. Um, if the air solenoid connection, uh, motor, ignition. 
this one's going to run down to the sub tank and control the um, for, for controlling the float or sorry supplying power to the element and controlling the float um, CAD cell wire will come in there we're going to shorten that it's way too long it's designed to go on big burners you know if you've got like a monster it's going to be a bit of a distance to run the uh, CAD cell wiring for that this is only a little baby burner so um only needs to be cut off and shortened so um i wish i wish i had a sixth outlet from this box but um it's pretty disappointing the build quality of this little vt controller uh, not so much the box itself but the actual base is piss weak um the plastic's flimsy it bends it's yeah it's i'm not really expecting miracles out of that base um getting the wiring in there with the loading of the cables coming out and that it just wants to bend and break off um really this should have been made out of um something a lot harder um so the controller just goes back on there so but but the connectors inside like they're pathetic um i've gone with uh bootlace terminals but if i did this again um i would uh go with those horseshoe type terminals that way they sort of sit under and locate properly um yeah so we're getting there um just got to work out what i'm going to do for an oil reservoir um a word of advice if you're doing this to a burner you do not want to oversize your oil reservoir because if it's too big it's going to take too long to heat up and uh you'll have to insulate it uh, I'm going to insulate it anyway because, you know, you're, we're all about power saving. So off the grid, we don't want to be having that element stay on any longer than is necessary. So a small tank uh, for a burner this size. So correct me if I'm wrong, but look, I've heard this rule of thumb before uh, regarding waste door burners. If your nozzle does um just say it does a litre a minute or something like that you'd probably want your tank to be 1.5 litres in size um i'm going to sort of go 1.5 two litres something like that um with a float in it uh, insulate it um have it you got to have it open to atmosphere so that the steam can come out of the oil especially if your oil's got any moisture in it um with moisture in the oil it does tend to have a cooling effect on the flame <clears throat> which we experimented with down at the melbourne steam traction engine club we had some crappy oil and yeah we noticed that our flame temperature reduced considerably with moisture in the oil so if you can filter your oil settle your oil filter it um filter it as much as possible before it comes up into the burner even though there's no um issues with nozzles clogging up from fine particulates the pump might have something else to say about that um, these are designed for extremely clean filtered diesel you do not want to put shit through these pumps they're just gonna fail quickly so i'm going to be centrifuging the oil before it's burnt in this thing get rid of the moisture get rid of the the particulates um, and even once you've centrifuged you still want to run it through some kind of a decent sized multi-layered um, filter just just for peace of mind um, yeah anyway uh, next step is to work out the oil tank so um I sort of apologise for not doing a video while I'm actually doing this work, but I don't have a tripod. I'm just using my mobile phone to shoot the footage. Um, I'm not really into all of that bloody um, media shit. So, you know, we just do things how we do them uh, here. So simplicity, let's do it with the phone. Um, but you can see what's been done. And then each video will have an update of the next stage uh, all the way up to a test fire. Um, hopefully this works. These pumps have got a decent flow rate as well. Um, unrestricted they'll flow, or oh, I think they'll flow about 
1.52 litres a minute, so not too bad. Um, yeah. We'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Lots more coming. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.